All right, so we got 1235. I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm Jay Lickus. I'm your host today from Benavia. And we have our amazing preferred partners expert presenter, Ms. Jeannie Grace. Um, I, I think I got your title right, correct? Community Outreach Manager? That's correct. With the Inspira at Arrowhead, which is a Cadence living community. Um, you folks have probably seen it up on the 101 there. Beautiful, beautiful facility. And Jeannie, I'm just going to ask you to kind of introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your background so everybody gets familiar, and then we'll go ahead and get started with our uh, topic today, the, uh, the top 10 most preferred options in senior living. Well, thank you, Jay. And Jay and I have worked together in this industry over quite a number of years, and I'm a very proud partner here at Benavia. They wonder, offer wonderful resources to people in the community like you. And I'm just really uh, proud and grateful to have been a vetted partner and a, and a trusted partner in sort of sharing what I know about this industry and what might be of value to you and, and perhaps what you might benefit from when you're making decisions. So my background is, as I was saying to Ellen uh, when she jumped on a little earlier, was my background is when I moved here to Arizona, it was to be near my aging parents. And um, my folks moved here in the 80, late 80s. And my husband and I decided that as we get closer to retirement, what a better place than Arizona. And then to also be near my, my mom and stepdad who were, were kind of on the same cusp where you're sitting now of, gosh, maybe um, there's some decisions that need to be made or some plans to be looked at for the near future. And I started my career in uh, working for Sun Health and I did work in the CCRC or the life care end of senior living. I now uh, no longer work in that in that arena, but I think it's very helpful when answering questions to people when they're looking. The community that I represent is called Inspira Arrowhead, and we're off the 101 at 75th in Glendale. And uh, the the biggest question, you know, becomes uh, why senior living, and do I do I want to look at something that is a little more involved and costs a little more money up front like a life care community or do I want the flexibility like Ellen does where I am month to month maybe there I need care maybe I don't but if I choose to leave and move to Buffalo New York where my children are later in life I don't have so much money vested and so the that's one of the reasons that um, I like sharing my background because we are, most of us, and Jay can attest to this, the people that we work with in this industry truly want to understand what people like you are looking for, uncover the lifestyle that you've been used to, and try to match you with the right place and right decision for your lives. And that's my background. That's what I do. I pretty much work out in the community. I partner with the police department. I work on Dementia Friends America Glendale Task Force. I started that. I work with the police department and the fire department and lots of different partners like Benavia in, again, helping people like you understand what is this whole senior living, now? I call it navigating the senior journey. And we're all on it, truly. You know, I'm not that far behind y'all and don't, you know, think for a minute, I don't look at my own life every single day as I work with people like you and with my parents and helping them make good decisions for how they want to spend the rest of their life because they've worked hard. But what my folks were finding was their friends in their neighborhood, some were passing away, some were moving into communities, some were moving to be near their families, and you become a little more isolated when your friends and your inner circle aren't near you any longer and so should i lead right into then you know what what this discussion is Just is about but kind of a little quick segue if you've got questions um, i'm sure we're okay if you just ask them during the presentation just kind of raise your hand um, you can see at the bottom of your screen there's a little chat bubble you can put your questions in there and we can answer them at the end and then when we're finished, we'll go through a question and answer period as well. So everybody has an opportunity because we're here to answer your questions. That's why we have these. So um, I know Jeannie's going to cover everything you want. We throw a lot of information at the end of a half hour. So um, just 
Don't be bashful when it comes to asking questions. How's that? So essentially to sort of start this in, in, a, in a way that makes sense is that there are a lot of choices. And I love that Arizona seems to be most in touch with um, different options for how we want to spend the rest of our lives. And, you know, I'm here to advocate today on behalf of why I feel and others have found choosing a community to move to is a great decision. It's not for everybody. You can choose to stay home and there's different, you know, costs that are involved with that. Um, and, or, uh, you know, you can have somebody come in, you can, uh, move to a community. Those are kind of, you know, pretty much your options or try to wing it on your own, which sometimes doesn't always have the best outcome. So with that said, I'm here to sort of point out the reasons why I think from my seven years of experience in this industry, um, it's smart. And what I've found in the experiences of those that we serve in the communities that I've worked for, um, what their lifestyle um, is like and what they find to be most uh, beneficial to them and their families. So a lot of you may have, like Ellen said, you know, you have children that live out of town and they're not always available to be there for you when you're not feeling comfortable driving, when making meals is just a lot. Maybe it's just you on your own or just you and your spouse. And it just, you want to eat well and healthy, but gosh, there's so much effort involved. Wouldn't it be nice to have somebody to do that for you? So I'm going to kind of go down this list um, of the top 10 um, preferred options of, of what senior living uh, gives you as a benefit if you choose to move to, to a community like Inspira, where I work. So the first one is life enriching, purposeful activities, continued learning, fitness and wellness. And I just wanted to show you, this is a sample calendar of what we have at Inspira. I don't mean for you to be able to read it. I just want you to see the plethora of choices. And it's everything from um, dancing with D, or there's a men's club, movie of the week, happy hour, bingo. Uh, a lot of times, uh, oh, manicure hour, social club, travel channel meeting, book club. Um, we have, uh, during this month, the Hanukkah appetizer event, Christmas and Christmas Eve um, socials. It, it just goes on and on. And so when, when I mean, and, and, and the purposeful part, is when we have like folks from the Herd Museum come in and talk about topics. That's continued learning. Uh, talking about, you know, what is Hanukkah? Even if you're not Jewish, you might want to learn. So we try to listen to what our residents are interested in and bring information to them that they're interested in. We even have a veterans club and a veterans group that comes in and talks about topics on that as well. The fitness and wellness, Gosh, we all want to feel good in our days. And I know I wake up and I'm a little, you know, stiff when I get out of this, you know, out of bed or off the sofa. And so we offer things and programs and, and music with movement and things to keep us moving so that we feel good in our day. So that's one, that's one, uh, one point. The, the next one kind of goes hand in hand. A vibrant, vibrant social engagement is another aspect to living in a community. And we don't use the F word. Um, Jay said facility. Oh. You know, we just don't want to talk about facilities. We are a community. We are a lifestyle. And we don't want people to think that they're in some sort of clinical environment because it's certainly not the case. So some people just prefer to read a book or have a little solitude and quiet time. And that's okay too. So when I meet with families, I say, gosh, maybe you aren't the social butterfly. Maybe you don't want to go to the happy hour. Maybe you prefer to eat your meals in your apartment by yourself. And you don't always have to be the social butterfly in the dining room. That's okay too. But if you do want to engage with other people that have similar backgrounds to you and who want to make friends and to do things together, it's all there for you if that's what you want to do when you're in the mood for that. 
Okay, number three, the dining experience and nutritional choices. So I don't know about you all, but I sometimes hear from people that they rely on uh, frozen meals, you know, throughout the day, or they pick up some fast food or have something delivered of that nature. Not at Inspira Arrowhead. You can have filet mignon, you can have salmon, you can have a lovely uh, signature salad, uh, you can have an omelet during the day. And of course, we do serve personal homemade pizza and nice desserts as well. So you can make all the choices that you wish. But we do have lovely meals that are, we do have some healthy choices for everybody. And it that maybe you don't have a grill anymore and you're not comfortable, look, you know, keeping the propane tank filled, but you like a nice grilled steak, we can deliver that. So dining and nutrition, those are important as we get older, especially if we need to watch our sodium or our gluten or our dairy. We're very sensitive to that. So we provide that in as part of your lifestyle experience. Jeannie, do you have a nutritionist? in the facility, or so, I'm sorry, in the community? No, yeah, you did it again, Jay. Um, we do not have a nutritionist. We have two nurses in the building and other care staff. And however, we, our chefs and our culinary directors are, you know, all overseen by a corporate person who ensures that there are nutritional considerations made in all of our menus. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I just, it was an option. Yes, no, I mean, if you want advice, we definitely could connect you. But all, all of our culinary directors are trained and they put their menus together so that there are great healthy choices for whatever program you're watching. Okay, next really big topic. And this, I'm not even, I'm almost 60. And let me tell you, this housework business is a lot, right? And I bet a number of you ladies are, are not, you know, as happy about having to whip that vacuum around and, uh, you know, all those chores. They, they, they don't, they're not as easy as they used to be even for me. And so when you live in a community, and especially at Inspira, we have somebody who comes in once a week and does your housekeeping for you. So they're going to do the mopping and they're going to clean your restrooms and they're going to clean your kitchen up. They're going to change the sheets on your bed and you have a washer and dryer in our apartments. Not all communities have that, but you have your own washer and dryer. And even if they're doing your laundry for you, they do it in your own apartment for you. So some of this heavy lifting that you're doing at home right now, managing the gardener and the pool person and the tree person and the roof leaking and irrigation and the garbage disposal, on and on it goes. We at Inspira have three maintenance fellas full-time. That's more than most. So all communities are going to have at least one person that's going to be looking out for you to take care of those things. So that's one less thing you have to worry about and you don't even have to pay that bill. So that's part of the value um, uh, in, in paying that one monthly service fee. So freedom from household responsibilities and low maintenance living and consolidating the expenses that go with managing all of that. We have a couple of questions in the chat. Sure, like sure. Take a peek at those. Sure. Um, Sue King said, how do you customize meals for residents having diet restrictions such as low sodium, low sugar, or low fat? Excellent question. So our culinary team generally meets with all new residents that move in. And part of the paperwork you fill out when you're applying to live with us uh, has those uh, questions. And that's something that you can meet directly with the culinary team to say, listen, I'm looking at this amazing menu and I have to stay very restricted on sugar. Please help me understand what's the best choices for me. And you can even ask the chef to come out during lunch if you're confused and you don't you're not sure they'll come out and they'll tell you right away because almost all the things in our community are made by from scratch a lot of them are so we we definitely consider that and i'd say there's a lot of communities that will do the same does that answer your question She's okay perfect what about vegetarian or vegan lifestyle 
So there are options for that, absolutely, because there are, there are people that come from all different backgrounds and decisions and choices. And there are definitely plenty of vegetable and you know vegan and vegetarian choices, especially at our community. So you know some of th there may be others that um, don't offer those same services. We're a little on the nicer scale of things. So the nicer the community, there might be a, a little different price structure, but then you're going to have more choices like that because of of the price point. Okay, so a lot of communities, regardless of the price point, offer, this is the fifth reason or, or you know, for considering a, a community living um, lifestyle, is that a lot of them have either an upscale light living amenities like a pool, like we have a pool that's heated 365 days a year. And we have a, a nice rail, so it makes it easy for you to, to go in. We have physical therapy offices in our building so that that's a convenience for you. We have a masseuse that is made by appointment so that if you need a little loosening up or maybe you have some, some neck issues or something and you want access to a masseuse, of course, that's at your expense, but it's a service that's brought into you in our community and in other communities as well. We have a hair salon. You can get your nails and hair done. So maybe in the beginning year or so that you move into a community, maybe you want to keep your gal and you want to continue to go to the places that you're comfortable with and used to. But maybe there comes a time where you just don't fill up to that and you're not driving and you don't want to have to you know, be driven anywhere when we have a perfectly great salon in our building. So that's that's a nice a nice option to consider as, as a reason uh, why a, a senior living community might benefit you. Number six, care is available if you need it now or in the future. And ultimately what that means for you and your family is peace of mind. So in our community, I mentioned we're independent living, assisted living, and then we have a separate memory care, a secure neighborhood, part of our building. But the independent living and the assisted living in our community is what we call integrated. So back to talking to Ellen in advance of most of you joining the conversation, you do not have to change apartments in our community. They're all set up to accommodate any of those um, activities of daily living that you might need a hand with either now or in the future, or you temporarily, let's say you have a hip replaced and you need a little extra of our help, our nurse will make sure there's a care plan as long as you need it. And if you don't need it after you've recovered, you still stay in your same apartment and you have the same access to the robust dining features and all the um, activity and social engagement that independent living would have. So that's a benefit uh, that we have that cares there. Maybe a lot of you all, like you said, Ellen, you're just thinking ahead. Maybe you don't need that extra help, but it's there. And some people like knowing that that is there 24 seven. Um, and that leads me right into the seventh reason that I think um, is a good one for choosing a senior living community. And that's that it's secured and it's safe. So not only safe for you personally, if you took a fall or you didn't feel well and you needed someone to, to help get you to the doctors or a hospital, but the building, so for in, is is secure. So we have somebody in our buildings 24 seven, a concierge, and they actually lock the exterior doors at 7 p.m. and they reopen them at 7 a.m. But your family still can come visit you. You can come and go. You know, nobody's telling you where to go or when to go or what to do. Um, the concierge would then open those doors for you, but at least it keeps the public out. And so if you're alone, I know that if if I were alone, you know, I have a security system at home, but gosh, sometimes I still, even then, am not as comfortable when my husband's out of town, uh, even with security systems. So it's kind of nice at our community and other communities that there's security in the building. And it just gives you that extra little peace of mind in the back of your mind that you know that someone's watching out for you and watching out for the premises. So that's a nice reason. Um, and number eight really is very similar to what we already talked about as far as personal care options. Um, I would say 
What I haven't touched on is we're so lucky here in Arizona that so many uh, services will come to us like no other state that I've heard of where there are mobile doctors. We have Dr. Cook and Dr. Madala that uh, both see our residents in their apartments for most general consultations. So, uh, and there are a lot of dental, podiatry, x-ray, uh, blood transfusion, there, uh, you name it. People come with their equipment, things are mobile and they'll come to your apartment. So it's kind of nice knowing that you don't have to get in your car, you don't have to trouble your children or you know, pay for a ride somewhere. If you're more comfortable having those services brought in, we can connect and make those happen for you. And number eight or number nine is pet friendly. So I think more and more communities are becoming pet friendly. So you can bring your little furry friend to live with you and we have a nice dog park that's fenced in with a place to sit and poopy bags and nice lighting for the evening. And our we have like 11 acres and grounds that you can walk your dog and get some exercise. You can have a cat in your apartment. So I think that that is something that's becoming more, more available at, at a lot of communities in our area. And last but not least is that transportation piece. So my stepdad's 94 and they live in a community and we've yet to be able to get those keys. And uh, I don't think he was a great driver when he was in his sixties or seventies. So now I know for sure he's probably not turning and looking enough and probably not a great idea to, to still be driving, but um, our, our community definitely offers transportation. So most communities will have a bus and or maybe a personal vehicle. Um, I also represent a community in Scottsdale that's part of our portfolio of communities, and they actually have a chauffeur with a high-end car, and they'll personally drive you to your doctor's or your hairdresser or your friend's house or church and so on. So there's there's just all these degrees that, and you know that those the price is going to be commensurate with service. That's just how the world works. So you, when you're looking and making your decision, and you get this little bit of sticker shock in the beginning of what it does cost. Think about it. Usually it's one price and it includes all these things. So we, we urge people to take a look and, and make a list of all the things that you paid for, your property taxes, your homeowner's insur uh, insurance and your homeowner's association bill, your um, electric utilities, all those things are included. Your meals, my goodness, has food not gone up or what, guys? I, it has almost doubled in my household. I, I just cannot believe how much I spend every week for just two of us to, to eat well. So all of these things are included in one price. So it just streamlines and, and we get those efficiencies and economies of scale of, of sharing, getting you know things in bulk. So instead of you heading down to Safeway and spending what you spend to make an omelet, you know, we can probably do it more affordably and, and then we're gonna do it for you. So um, I have a few more things that I just wanna share before we open it up to questions of other things that I think you should consider when you're deciding if you want to make this kind of a move and uh, where. So location, goodness gracious, location is very important. You have friends and family. So Ernest, you live in Westbrook. Well, gosh, Inspira is a couple miles from Westbrook. And we have a handful of people that have transitioned from Westbrook Village to Inspira because they can stay connected with their friends. And that's super important. So you need to consider where you live and, it, and whether or not it's important that you're within driving distance of your friends, your family, your doctors. If you like going to the Arizona Broadway Theater, you know, our community happens to be four miles right up 75th. I mean, it's a straight shot almost from where our, we're located. But any other entertainment venues and things that you like to do, consider your the location of a community that you choose, you know, to, to where you like to hang out and things that you like to do with whom you like to do them. So of course, pricing is important. Y'all have probably, you're, you're one, you're really my favorite generation 
because I think you're the last generation that's truly saved and been frugal and have learned from your folks who probably lived through harder times than we've lived through. And it's hard sometimes to say to your to to let yourself feel that you deserve to live a nice lifestyle and spend your money. You know, I think a lot of, of my folks and my grandparents, it was really important for them to leave money to all of us. But any good child or grandchild is going to say, mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, you guys have worked hard. You deserve the nicest community that you want to live in. So I would just say, give yourself permission to enjoy what you've earned. And, and consider when you're looking at the price, you need to, to look at the value. Well, gosh, I like all these amenities and I like all this wonderful menu that they offer and all of these activities. And like, we do a lot of live entertainment. That doesn't come in expensively. You know, you've got to look at the value of what you're paying for. So if you enjoy mariachi music and like we had, a, we have a six piece mariachi band that comes every Cinco de Mayo, we pack the room. We also have a wonderful luau every year where we have wonderful um, folks doing Hawaiian dances from all the islands. We have a, a wonderful uh, fella that um, is from Ireland and he sings Irish songs and we have a bagpiper that comes in, but those folks cost money. And, and we have a live pianist in our, in our lobby every day for a couple of hours, live music. We have a live band every Friday for happy hour. Most communities have some of these, some of these, not, not as, as robust as ours, but you get what you pay for. And I'm not, I'm not really saying to necessarily consider in spirit. I'm just saying when you're looking, consider what you're paying for and make sure there's value for what you're paying for, the types of meals, the types of uh, entertainment, the types of excursions. I mean, we go to casinos and the butterfly exhibit and the herd museum and uh, all kinds of places. Um, uh, we even have some residents, we have a retired fire fighter who loves to play pickleball. And our life enrichment director, she plays pickleball, even though she's in her 60s as well, and he's probably in his 70s. She takes the bus and three of them go play pickleball. So you want a community that's going to be flexible to the things that you like. We have a couple that came in and they're very young. I, I don't even know if they're 70. They want to play ping pong. Well, we arranged our activities room and we bought a ping pong table. And they're up there almost every day for a good hour playing ping pong because that's what they like to do. We're thinking about putting a pickleball court on our community because we have residents that want that. So when you're looking, look for a place that you feel is going to serve you because this is going to be your home and you want to be in an environment with people that you feel comfortable with and you feel have your best interest at heart. So are there any other, any questions? That's amazing. I wish I'd played pickleball. Everybody seems to be playing it now. It's never too late to start. I'm going to start. <laughs> I plan to start in my 60s. Well, we got a great question here okay. from Pam. Do residents need rental insurance? Oh, my goodness. That's a great question. We definitely recommend it. I don't, at our communities, we don't require it, but we do highly recommend it because you want to make sure that if, if your daughter comes and she trips over your coffee table, you're, you're ultimately responsible inside your apartment for that. So we highly recommend that you cover, you protect your assets by doing that. And that's usually a couple hundred a year. You know, and we have preferred um, professionals that we partner with that can get in touch with you, you know, and help you facilitate that. It's a great question. Yeah, you want to protect the the valuables that you do bring. And I'd say most communities don't recommend that you bring a ton of valuables uh, with you. Um, you know, a lot of times when we get to this age, we start thinking about handing some things down. I know my parents did. And I will do the same when I move to a, a community uh, environment. I, I will probably have already, you know, or make sure they're in a safe deposit box. You know, that's, that's a good, that's, but for what you do have, a lot of people come and they have beautiful artwork and gosh forbid their, you know, fire extinguisher goes off and, and the water's everywhere and you want to make sure those things are protected. So that's a great question. That's awesome. Any other questions? Yep. Lori uh, asked, who provides the care contracts or can it be the choice of the family? 
And then what about private duty care? So a two, two-parter there. Two-parter. So because our community is licensed for assisted living as well as independent living and as well as memory support, we do meet with the nurse meets with every incoming resident, regardless of you don't take a pill for anything or whether or not we're going to put a care plan together and make sure someone's in there helping you with a shower twice a day. So everyone is evaluated and um, we get a note from your doctor saying, yep, she is fine to live on her own and she takes these two meds, but she's got it covered. Or you know what? Um, this person really needs you know, help with several things throughout their day. We provide the bulk of that oversight with our in-home caregivers. Uh, we have med techs and they're specially trained to distribute your medication prescriptions. Now, if you want to go exclusively with your own care, private duty care, that would be at your additional expense. And although we are ultimately responsible for that oversight of you, you are more than welcome to have a private duty uh, care person to oversee your care if that's what you choose. But that would be at an additional cost to you, but you are more than welcome to, to have that additional help. We also have residents that want that companion care. So there's a lot of professionals that we partner with that have what they call home health agencies um, that you know, for an hourly fee for a couple hours a day or six hours a day, whatever you choose, we'll come in and play cards with you or maybe make your favorite tuna sandwich every Friday or uh, get you off to TJ Maxx to go shopping or Hobby Lobby or whatever it is that you want to do, sit around and talk politics. They'll, you know, there are professionals that can also just be companions as well. Lori also asked, do you use a specific company? Oh, for um, for private, for care, for private care? Yeah, so, for the private duty. For private duty. So we don't have one in particular, and I'm sure that our, our care staff would recommend those that they found to have the best outcome for residents in our building, because I'm sure that's a moving, that's a changing thing. But we can definitely send you on the right path with recommending who we would recommend. Absolutely. We can. But when you provide it, when, when you provide it, do you get a choice? Is that what no. Doing? When you provide it through you, uh -huh. do you, what company do you use? It's our own staff. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Sorry. Thank sorry. You. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Sure. We, we do staff. We do st staff care staff 24 7. Yeah. Got it. Some, you know, some places they contract with certain companies. So that's why I right. was asking. And that's usually when it's strictly independent living and they don't have in-house services. So that's when you would, that's generally what you, when you would find that set up. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. That's awesome. Lori also asked about uh, whether or not, I guess, um, Inspira accepts long-term care, private plans and all techs. That's an excellent question. Thank you so much, Lori, for asking that. So our communities are all what we call private pay. Now, if you have a long-term care insurance policy, our business office will help facilitate you receiving those payments towards your monthly service fee. So if you have purchased a long-term care plan and you qualify through your insurance company's requirements, we help facilitate you collecting that towards your monthly rent with us. So yes, uh, as far as all techs, we are not um, an all techs uh, provider. There are there are several. Uh, if you want to contact me after this, I can. Uh, and I think that actually Jay probably has other care uh, other partners like myself that that he would probably recommend that do have all techs as um, that they accept that insurance. Uh, and that's Medicaid. For those of you who might not know what all techs is, that is Arizona's uh, name for Medicaid. And oftentimes those communities aren't quite as fancy. And sometimes they require you to share a room with another person. Um, but at least there are there are decent places to live when you can't afford 
um, you know, a higher end uh, community lifestyle. Did I answer that? Do you all have private, do you have all private rooms? So yes, um, in our community at Inspira, all of our apartments are private. There are, like I just mentioned, some communities that will have shared room opportunities. And, and let's face it, there are people that come to our communities that aren't married that want to uh, room together and, and however they want to work out paying the, the bill is, is fine with us. Um, so we are not opposed. It's interesting, in our, in our community, we have two sisters that live in our community. Now they have their own apartments. We're kind of now recommending that maybe they think about moving in together because one's struggling a little bit and we want to prolong that memory care move if, if she was with her sister. We've had a couple whose brother-in-law also lives in our building. We have a mother and daughter who live in our community because the daughter had had a stroke early on and she's in a, in a wheelchair, but they don't live in the same apartment, but they live in our community together. And this is another interesting one. We have um, a gentleman uh, whose daughter is married to another gentleman resident whose son played. So a couple put both of their fa you know, widowed fathers separately in our community. So there's lots of family situations, but I guess back to your point, um, if you want to share a room and you have a roommate or you want to move in with a roommate, we're, we're not opposed to that, but the way it's set up is that they're, they're individual apartments, if that makes sense. Most of them have more than one bathroom. So uh, the two bedrooms have two bathrooms. The one bedroom actually has one bedroom, one bathroom, and they're all huge though. The footprint for the bathroom for studios, one bedroom and two bedrooms are the same size. They're very generous sized so you can get around. Any other questions? Did I miss anything? This, this is your time, folks. <laughs> Don't be bashful. I know this is a hard time. Don't be afraid to ask questions. There's no silly questions. Um, I know that it's not easy to think about this as a plan. Uh, I think I one thing else I, uh, that I want you to consider is a lot of times we find people wait really way too long sometimes because they get hung up with all the stuff that needs to be to to be sorted through and just don't let your stuff hold you back from a really in a life enriching experience for yourself there are companies and people that we work with that actually do that for a living they come in and they don't have an emotional attachment to your things and they help you really decide what's most important and what will fit because they usually know all the different communities in our area and what their floor plans are and what recommendations to make without an emotional attachment to your belongings. And they can really help you sort through those things. And they'll usually put some, they'll make three areas. One will things that you're going to give to your family, things that you want to sell, things that you want to toss or give to the goodwill. And then they'll make arrangements to move your belongings and then set up your apartment for you like it's home when so that when you walk in the door, it's already, you know, put together. So there's there's all kinds of options to make that transition smooth. But I know this is hard. I know you guys have questions. So, you know, feel free to, to ask, you know, if you want us to contact you later, or you want to get a hold of Jay and you want me to call you and answer questions, I'm happy to do that if you're not comfortable in a group a group setting. But there's really no dumb questions. This is a big deal. Just so everybody knows, and those folks that have been on uh, workshops before, this is being recorded. So once we get the uh, video portion of this edited down, it'll be posted on our Benavia YouTube channel under the uh, workshop. So you can find that, watch it again at your convenience. And once I have a link to that, I will be sending everybody an email with the link to that video, um, the little handout we use today. And I'll have all of Jeannie's contact information as well. So you can reach out to her one-on-one -on -one, um, with any questions you have or any concerns. And truly, you know, in this west part of the, the valley uh, here in Arizona, if that's where most of you are calling from, we really work together as a team, even if Sally has a different community that's similar to mine, but it's down the street. And, and we really all want you all to make good decisions for yourself. 
So we want people to be happy when they make a decision to live with us. So we certainly don't want to twist your arm to move into any of our communities where it's not going to be a good experience for you. Truly, we try to we, we want it to be a good fit for everybody. And I just want to show give you show you another visual. So we put together this amazing newsletter. And I just want to show you for the people who like to be busy, oh Lord have mercy. This these are pictures of all the many things that we have done and the people and the and the employees that that participate and and are a part of your become a part of your life. So everybody, this is our executive director. She's in a jersey for Jersey Day. You know, we're we're all in this industry because we love, we love this generation. We love serving. We love um, you know, doing what we do. And uh, like I said, if there's any other questions, I, I see another one. Oh, somebody has to go. All right. Her Thank you. Thanks, Thank Ernest. There was Jeannie. Yeah. Um, by my questions, you probably know I'm a social worker, but right. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to back you on, uh, you know, the pricing thing. Sometimes people have a hard time with that. And one of the things I always kind of told people is, you know, people do wait too long. And I always talked about safety because if they fall and break a hip, that 20% Medicare copay between the hospital and rehab, that could have bought them a few months in a assisted living or independent living. So when you, you know, so when you add that up, so when you're getting to that point of being unsteady, yeah, that's the time you really need to ask yourself if it's time to move. Really good point. And I'll tell you, I've worked with enough folks who I've seen the people who have made the choice on their own and plan ahead and made the move because they want to. And then I've worked with probably more people on the other side of things <clears throat> where a daughter has flown in from Texas, had to take a week off work. It's kind of in a rush to pick a place for mom or dad. Nobody's happy. Everybody's in a bad mood. Somebody's had some sort of health crisis, a fall or an illness that makes them not safe, as Lori said, to stay at home. And <clears throat> those don't make for good relationships with your family. And you all sometimes end up making a decision in a community that maybe you wouldn't have chosen had you put a, a few more days thought into it. So I just urge you all to really do it before you absolutely last minute need to it's rarely a happy occasion when we're all skirmishing to to put your place together for you now we've done probably 15 or 16 of these workshops over this year and the conversation always seems to come around with um, an, an end point of you know don't do this under duress make sure you're prepared for where we're going you know next in life and I always recommend, and you know, those of you who have been on the call have heard this before, but start putting your team together. This is, you, you can't do this alone. It's very difficult. And if you have the time now, find a friend, find a neighbor, find a loved one, a family member, somebody from your church or congregation, and get two or three people together with you. Let them know what your plans are and have them support you and help you as you make these big life changes. Don't try to do it on yourself because it's, it's you know, we've seen it, Jeannie's probably seen it more than I have, that many times it, it's debilitating to our health, our mental condition, and decisions just aren't done well under stress. So get yourself a team, and then you go out there and you can be positive about what you're doing. I think we had one more question pop up we can take, Jeannie, because I know we're over our half hour okay. here. Um, Rita had asked, is this a profit or for nonprofit establishment and do the prices go up for each level of care so i'm sure she's referring to inspira so that's a great question inspira is a private pay and it is a for-profit organization and that's why we're able to offer such an amazing dining opportunity and the entertainment and the engagement and the nice big staff 
So our life enrichment team, it, you know, has three people for memory care and three full-time people for independent living and assisted living, whereas most communities have one for all of that. So you are definitely um, going to get what you pay for in that area. So the pricing, back to the pricing question, um, what was the other detail on that question? Sorry, took it down. Sorry, I missed that part. So um, so the prices for levels of care. So I answered yes, it is. Uh, we are um, not a not-for-profit. And the levels of care are established in that uh, in the very beginning, as I mentioned, when you meet with a nurse and you're assessed and she looks at what your doctor is signed off on and what we've assessed through asking questions about what your day looks like and so on. And that determines what level of care you need or don't need. And that's a moving thing. So yes, let's just say you move in and you're independent, but you know, you've been forgetting when to take those meds. And so you know, we put you on that care plan that they, the med tech comes around three times a day and make sure you take your medications. But if, if a year down the road, um, you, you know, aren't feeling comfortable taking, you know, bathing on your own. So, you know, that may require an, an additional level of assistance and more of our time. So the more time we spend with you, the more that's going to cost. And that I think makes sense to most of us. So yes, there are multiple levels of care and uh, there is a price that's associated with the amount of time that folks need to spend helping you through your day. Any other questions? Kind of a quiet bunch today. Well, not so bad, not so bad. Well, you did a great job, Jeannie. Thanks. I think you answered a lot of questions as we went through this. and. It's a, uh, you know, that, that was a broad topic. There's a lot of different options and a lot of different things that people are looking at when they make a change to some sort of uh, different living community. So um, thank you for doing that today. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, before we leave, like I said, once again, I just wanna let you know that you'll be getting an email from me with the link to this video and all the information and Jeannie's contact information on that. So you can, uh, Take a look at this again and get your questions answered uh, at your own convenience. And I'd be bereft of my duties. I, I see a Christmas tree in the back. I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Happy Hanukkah or Happy Kwanzaa, whatever uh, your family enjoys out there. And thank you for being a supporter of Benavia and uh, joining us during these workshops. We appreciate it. All right. Everybody have a fantastic afternoon. Thanks for coming.